Hey, what's up everybody? I want to do a quick one today and show you the side deck patterns, how I prepared for the regionals for my uh, Chimera branded deck and just talk about uh, preparing for side decking in general. So uh, I took a different approach this time. This is, I mean, this might be the correct approach that everyone's doing, but this is the first time, I'm, uh, first time I did it. Uh, I opened up just a spreadsheet and wrote down what I wanted to side in going first and going second. Uh, for every matchup I was preparing for. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go through uh, what my options were for um, for this tournament. Uh, this was the regional. This is uh, still in the June uh, June 2023 banlist format, so that's still with Kachira around. But honestly, uh, the side the the decks to prepare for are pretty much the same except for Cash. So um, I still think this siding pattern is good. And on the right is the deck list that I took to that regional. Um, the only thing that's out of date for the new format is that I played two Magna Mutt. So uh, for the new format, honestly, just cut one Magna and put one um, put one more Druid Swarm in there. Uh, because in the side decking patterns, I just write down Bestials. I don't specify which one. So um, yeah, just play three Druids and it'll be updated for the next format. And honestly, I think this deck is perfectly playable for the next format as is. I think all of the non-engine is still good. Uh, Eclipse is still gonna be good against Cat, I mean against Pearly, um, against uh, Unchained, trying to just out the DDDXEs and stuff like that. Cross out is still gonna be good and so forth. So uh, if you're looking for a Chimera list, this one is still gonna be good. Just swap that Magna in the side for another Druis. Anyway, um, I'm gonna just go through each matchup and talk about what I would, what I was planning to side in going first and going second. So uh, the decks I prepared for in this tournament were Unchained, Cash, Pearly, uh, Dragon Link, Labyrinth, and branded uh, and then things that I didn't prepare for but I made this after the fact were Menadium, Infernoble and Tear and I picked these because I actually played against those in the tournament so uh, this is uh, what I sided in and out in those games and um, yeah I think this is I'm pretty sure this is exactly what I sided in and out but I'm not positive but this is what I would do uh, looking at it uh, the reason that you want to do this kind of prep thing is because you don't want to be sitting there in the middle of the tournament in between uh, games. You know, you if you just got beat real bad and you need to figure out what to side, you might not be in the right headspace. So if you've done all of this uh, prep beforehand, you can take a non-biased look at what you want to be putting in, what you want to be taking out in each of these matchups, and it saves a lot of mental energy uh, during the tournament, which is very important for long tournaments like that. So um, anyway, all right, let's talk about Unchained. So uh, Unchained going first. The only cards I'm putting in from my side deck here of what I brought to the tournament is going to be two copies of Cosmic Cyclone, and that's because uh, it's just really good when they go set a trap and then activate like Aruha in hand or uh, Sharvara in hand. You can cosmic away that set uh, and then the monster does not resolve and it stays in hand. So um, cosmic is very good against Unchained and I sided out to Imperm because really Imperm is not doing much going first. The only thing it's really hitting is Yama, uh, which is not bad, but the cosmics are far more impactful than Yama. Uh, so... I th I, then imperming the Yama. So I think Cosmic is worth siding in over the imperms and really nothing else in this side deck uh, is for going first against Unchained. D barriers are not worth putting in. Obviously not putting in Evenlies and then Bistials going first are not that great. They're not really gonna hit much of anything because they're probably not gonna be using Yama uh, right off the bat. So um, yeah, I'd rather have the main deck as it is and then just the two Cosmics. Going second, however, is a different story. So uh, going in is gonna be three evenly, three Alpha Master of Beasts and two Bestials. If you missed the deck profile, please go check that out. It's in the description below, but I talk all about why I played Alpha and really it's to out the DDD XCs. You just special summon it 
swing over or special summon it use effect if they don't have rage or something to stop you so um it's really nice really big body to put on field so uh yeah i put in eight cards against or i plan to put in eight cards against unchained i didn't actually play against unchained in the tournament but coming out is going to be three prosperity three and you'll notice that three prosperity is coming out every single game going second and i talked about that in my profile as well uh but if you are going second you want to be resolving Guardian Chimera. Guardian Chimera must draw in order to pop cards, and you cannot draw if you activate Prosperity. So it's easier just to take out the Prosperity so you don't have any conflict there, and it makes it very easy to side deck, okay? So uh, let me actually see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, we're on the Unchained going second. So uh, going in three evenly, three Alpha, two Bestials, and then coming out three Prosp, three Cross Out, and two Imperm. Uh, I didn't really anticipate hand traps necessarily in the um unchained deck and uh the three cross out is um I, I don't know i just wanted to take something out and i felt like um because they have the ddd xc's chances are i'm not going to be activating branded fusion or chimera fusion anyway so i don't really care about cross siding ash i'd rather deal with the problem at hand which is the xc's monster uh, and if I can just swap the crossouts out for alphas to deal with the immediate problem, then I'll just hope they don't have ash. Uh, and then the two bestials for two imperm, like I said, the imperms are not a big deal. Uh, so I'd rather have the bestials in going second and then evenly for the prosp is of course good. Um, all right, so uh, I'll briefly go over Kashtira. Obviously, it's not really a factor going forward, but still important to look at because uh, it might apply to other matchups. So coming in, going first, 3D Barrier and one Cosmic Cyclone. Um, just to stop them from XC summoning, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, and then the one Cosmic, just because it's better than the Called by the Grave against Kashtira. And then same with three Imperm. Like if I would, had to choose between having an Imperm against Kash or a D Barrier against Kash, I'll take the D barrier every time, and that's my reasoning, basically. Uh, and then going second, coming in is going to be three alphas, three evenlies. Coming out is going to be three prosperity, three cross outs. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted stuff to deal with the board rather than preparing for hand traps. So that's why cross out came out. Alpha goes in to out a rise heart um, or force it at least, and then evenly is just good. Uh, all right, pearly. Going first, okay, so going first, obviously D Barrier is an easy side in against Pearly, and then two Cosmic Cyclone. I just think Cosmic is a lot of value. Uh, just hit the My Friend Pearly, and it stops a lot of stuff. Uh, and then coming out is obviously three Nibiru. It's going to be dead against Pearly, and then two copies of Talent. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think Talent is fine to side out there. Uh, and then going second, coming in, it's going to be three Alphas. Uh, just to out the Noir, or at least force the Noir, if they don't have um, enough materials underneath, you can sometimes just attack over it. If it doesn't have a Delicious, they force the Noir, and that's really nice. Uh, three copies of Evenly Matched, um, just because it's it's probably good. They set a lot of cards, and then we have two Cosmic Cyclones as well. Like I'm, I'm fairly confident in my deck's ability to out the Noir, uh, but I don't want them recycling all of their stuff. And I don't want their field spell to protect them from targeting effects. So, yeah, that like if I go, if I have branded fusion, I can go into Rinbrum, uh, and then Rinbrum is basically an out to Noir because once they activate it, I can. It'll probably have fewer than five materials, and then I can negate and bounce. But I want to be able to bounce it, and therefore I need to get rid of the field spell. And I think Cosmic is fine to come in. Uh, coming out is three nib, three prosperity, and two talents as well. Uh, the talents is questionable. You can leave the talents in, but usually they get enough value off of the draws on the noir in the first place. And if you talent try to take noir, they're going to burn all the materials to shuffle your talent back. So um, I don't think talents that great going second. Um, all right, yeah. Moving on to dragons. So uh, dragon link is still going to be relevant in the next format, so it is worthwhile uh, talking about it. So coming in is not going to be too much. I have four Bestials. All four of my Bestials are coming in. Coming out is going to be two Imperm, one Called by, one Ash. Because I don't expect too many hand traps. Uh, yes, I expect Bestials in their hand. Uh, but Called by is not really going to help me with that. And Ash is really not going to help me with much of their board anyways. So um, I think the Bestials are just better hand traps against Dragons going first than the Imperm and Ash uh, to try to stop their follow-up. Going second, again, 
Bestial is fantastic against dragons, one of the main reasons I play Bestial in the first place. Uh, and then three, Alpha Master of Beasts. Again, Alpha is a great card to deal with Heretic Seals, okay? Because you can special summon Alpha, go battle phase, and it, they, it forces the seals. Uh, and if they bounce it, you can special summon Alpha again. Uh, and then you can still try to use Alpha effect. So it deals with a lot of stuff all at once. And I, st I think Alpha is just fantastic against that deck. Plus it outs big body monsters. It's an out to Boroland Dragon if they make that. Uh, because Alpha does not target the opponent's monster. So that's really nice. Um, so that's why I was going in for Alpha on that. So uh, once you put in the four Bistials, you have a lot of hand traps. You're going to have... Uh, three Imperm, three Ash, three Nib, four Bistials. So uh, it's a total of 13 hand traps against Dragon Link, and they're going to have a hard time. Coming out is three Prosperity, three Cross Out, and one Eclipse. I don't expect standard hand traps in Dragons, uh, and I don't expect them to be setting D Barriers, so I don't think it's really necessary to keep your Cross Outs in uh, and put in one D Barrier against Dragons. Uh, Eclipse is not going to be that great either. I probably, I don't know if I actually followed through with this in the actual game I played against Dragon Links. I might have sided out the Eclipses, but really they're going for a lot of Link plays. So I, I kind of like to follow along, see what happened game one. Did they go for a lot of a big synchro board or did they go for a big Link board? If it's a synchro board, then I usually keep the Eclipses in. But if it's Links, if they're going like Boroland with like seals or something, I don't know. Can you even do that? Uh, I guess like Boroland, Boro Load Savage is okay, um, but yeah, Eclipse is not going to be a game breaker against Dragon, so it's okay to take some of those out, um, yeah. Um, Alright, so on to Labyrinth. I did not play against Labyrinth, lucky me, but going first, if I was to go first after siding, I would side in four Bestials, and this is for Furniture Labyrinth specifically, uh, not for the, like, Trap Labyrinth. If it was Trap Labyrinth, I would not put in the four Bestials, but um, yeah. Uh, four Bestials and then two Cosmic Cyclones was my plan for going first. And then coming out would be obviously Nibs and Books. Uh, they're not really going to make a big difference against the Labyrinth deck. Uh, and then going second into Lab. Holy cow, my whole ass side deck is basically built for this. So um, I'm putting in three Evenlies here. Whoops, uh, three Evenlies, three Alphas. Alpha is 3,000. I can beat over or swing into a um, into the Labyrinth Monsters, uh, which is really nice. Obviously, don't want to bounce them because you can summon it back. But um, yeah, Alpha is going to be kind of nice uh, just to force some interruptions. Three Evenlies, of course, because it's Trap Deck. Four Bestials only for the Furniture Build. One D Barrier for Cross Out. Uh, because I expect them to be able to search the D barrier basically. Um, so I do want to have that in for cross out and then two cosmic cyclones in for any floodgates. And then coming out, it's not that hard. Even though it's 13 cards coming in, uh, we have three nibs. We're not going to need those. Three prosperities because of Guardian Chimera. Three eclipses, they're not going to be very useful. Two imperms, also not going to be very useful. I don't know why that's not three imperm. Uh, oh, it might be for cross out. Uh, and then two copies of talent. Um, because these are all basically dead against Labyrinth. So it's very easy to actually get in a really good sideboard against Lab and not really cost you much out of the main. Um, next, moving on to Branded. Uh, coming in is going to be 3 D Barrier easy and 4 Bestial easy. Like these cards are just so good against Branded, especially going first. Uh, and then coming out is going to be 3 Eclipse. Like the books against the Fusion decks, easy side out. Uh, Nibiru. It's not really going to be a big deal against Branded, so I think that's fine. And then one Imperm. Uh, Imperm's not great against Branded just because of Branded Lost. Uh, if they have the right setups, it's only live sometimes. And I'd rather have Bestials and D-Barriers than the Imperm. Uh, going second is going to be similar. Uh, we're going to have three Evenlies, uh, four Bestials, and then three Alphas. I think these cards are all good against Branded. Uh, Alpha is really nice. It outs Mirror Jade without triggering its effect or forces the Mirror Jade itself. Um, just more reasons to play alpha. Uh, coming out is going to be three nibs for the same reasons I just talked about. Three books, of course, three prosperity as usual. And then for the last card, it's kind of up to you. But going second, I think you can side out a gazelle. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable um, to do. Um, so that's going to be it for uh, the branded matchup. Now let's move on to the combo heavy decks. 
uh, that I didn't really prepare for in my mind uh, in terms of side deck patterns, but this is what ended up happening. So going first against Manadium, my main deck is very good, uh, very well equipped for Manadium going first. So the only thing I'm siding in against Manadium is one copy of Evenly Matched just for the cross out designator. And I think we can bring out one Fenrir most likely. Um, and that did actually come up in my Manadium game. I cross outed and Evenly that I sided in. Uh, going second, however, uh, I want to just put in as much interruption as I can. I want to have maximum hand traps, even if they're not super impactful. So uh, Bistiels against Manadium is just like, okay. Uh, it, it kind of interrupts their stuff. If they use um, Scareclaw Arrival, uh, that's pretty much where the best place to Bistiel is going to be. Or if they have like... Uh, a vicious astral out play in grave they have like the visas and the room heart or the right heart in grave you can just preemptively bestial one to try to make it a pain in the ass for them to go into astral out and cross sheep so and you know they're about to go into astral out whenever they link summon cross sheep so just on summon of cross sheep just bestial uh whatever fusion material away and you are at least in a better spot than you were before um but yeah manadium basically if they're uninterrupted they'll ftk your ass so uh i want to put in as many hand traps as i can and i'm taking out similarly eclipse because you know going second into a manadium board they're gonna have just so many damn negates that eclipse is not going to be very worthwhile uh called by the grave similarly and then prosperity as always going second uh, also coming in going first is a one copy of d barrier just because, uh, just for for the cross out, uh, and then two copies of Alpha to try to swing over their big bodies without activating any effects, getting them to trigger um, reframing or any of that kind of stuff. Alpha is kind of nice. It can even just trade with a Baron, just crash into the Baron, and that's one last thing you have to deal with. Uh, okay, on to Infernoble. Infernoble is a little bit hard for this side deck because, of course, I can't have, I don't have any hand traps to side in. All I have are Bistiels, and Bistiels are not effective against Infernoble. So coming in, going first uh, against Infernoble is going to be two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. If you have a well-timed Cosmic on one of their equips or their uh, museum, it's really nice. Uh, and then coming out is two talents because I don't expect any hand traps in the Infernoble deck. I expect board breakers and just like full gas. So talents is not going to be live going first most of the time. So definitely worth siding those out. And then going second, coming in. Three copies of Evenly Matched. It's pretty much the only thing that's gonna help me going second here um, because uh, my alphas are not gonna be big enough to get over anything um, because their guys are all like plus 500 attack from whatever it is, museum maybe. And yeah, just 3000 is just not big enough. So alphas are not coming in here. Uh, and then it's just easy three prosperity coming out for that. Uh, and then against tier, this is an easy one usually. There's a lot, you know what to side in and out against tier. Uh, coming in, it's gonna be the same as branded. So let's scroll back up to branded. Coming in for both of these decks is three D barrier and four best deals. And coming out is gonna be three book. Uh, and then for the tier case, three imperm is coming out and one nib. I think nib is a bit stronger against tier than it is against branded, whereas. Uh, the other way around imperm is a bit better against branded um so i'd rather have this lineup here and then coming in second uh similar to branded as well we have four bestials uh three alphas three evenlies for branded we have four bestials two alphas three evenlies so I, alpha just was well, is not as much value and there's nothing i really want to side out i think probably it's going to be the same up here as well uh, probably drop back down to two alpha and just leave the gazelle in i don't really like siding out engine um and then coming whoops sorry i'm moving around coming out is three prosperity three imprim three book uh, all cards are not that great against here or the cards coming in are just better so um yeah those are my side deck patterns so now let's talk about it in general a little bit uh, i already said it a few times prosperity going second comes out every time at three uh, and if you'll notice, I never side out engine, never side out engine. Uh, I always have my two Burfos, three mirrors, three gazelle, three quaddle, two fusion, and then the entire branded package always stays in. Also the Fenrir's almost always stay in. Uh, you can consider taking Fenrir's out whenever you side in Bistials because they do conflict. If you do summon a Bistial on your opponent's turn, uh, when you're going second, when it's your turn, 
you can't summon the Fenrir. So sometimes Fenrir is something to consider taking out when Bestials are coming in, uh, and that's totally fine. Um, but otherwise, the engine always stays in. Always swap your non-engine out for more non-engine because it doesn't do you any good to have a whole bunch of non-engine that's good and then just zero engine to actually be able to push your own agenda. So um, yeah, I think that's where we're at. Uh, something else uh, I never, obviously, some of the things I didn't end up playing in the side were uh, Lightning Storm and Harpies. That's because I was scared of Anti-Spell Fragrance. So uh, if you're scared of Anti-Spell, those cards are not going to do anything for you. Also, I'm not playing Thrust in this deck, and Thrust is probably one of the main reasons to play Harpies and Lightning Storm. Otherwise, I'd rather just have the Quick Play. I'd rather just have the uh, Cosmics, rather just have the Evenly Matched, and I'll be okay. Uh, I didn't play Super Poly. I talked about why in my FAQs video uh, that was also out recently on my channel. Um, but basically, going second with Super Poly is pretty trash against most of these decks. So that's why Super Poly is not in here. Um, other things I did not play uh, that I was considering Droll. Um, Droll is just not good against most of these decks except for like Manadium. Uh, it's like solid against Infernoble, but it's not everything. Uh, and then it's solid, same with Dragon. It's solid against Dragon, but it's not everything. But otherwise, Droll is not that great. So um, decided to go with this side deck instead of um, any other hand traps or any other Droll, any other uh, like no Bell, no Lancia, no um, Phantasmate, didn't think Phantasmate was worth playing right now, uh, and so forth. So, yeah, that's it for this one. I kind of rambled a bit, but hey, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed, if this is helpful. And with that, we will catch you guys in the next one. We'll see you later.